Now, the iPhone footage, do not get me wrong, especially from the iPhone 15 Pro Max is of an exceptional high quality. However, it is still over sharpened, including the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I did do a comparison video that you might have seen to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. And you can see it very quickly that it shot with an iPhone. However, there are ways to soften the image a little bit without putting like a blur filter over the whole image. So let's see what we can do to make it a little bit more like it's shot on, for example, a DSLR or mirrorless camera. And the cool thing is that this trick you can apply to, for example, GoPros, action cameras in general, and drones, of course, if you don't use any accessories. If you have ND filters for your phone or your drone, uh, there's one step that we can skip, uh, but uh, let's come back to that a bit later in the video. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. This is a footage of me and my fam walking around on a Glacier in Norway. It shot with an iPhone mini 13. That was my wife's phone because I had an old iPhone 11. The iPhone 13 mini had a much better video quality, so I used that one instead. Now, this is the footage after we have put all of these filters on it, and we're gonna have a look at a few different things. Now, look here, for example, on the rope. There is a motion blur on it. Also, my foot with the crampons, you can see here that there is movement. If we remove all of the filters, it looks like this. Completely sharp, the rope and the camera is moving. You can see here when I'm walking, the stones in the foreground here are very sharp. Let's pause it one moment. Zoom in slightly. We're not gonna go too far so that I don't have the comments saying that you're Pixel peeping, this is not. This is at 127%. Uh, now this is before and after. You see that, you see that the stones and rocks in the foreground have a much higher motion blur than the glacier itself in the background. Now uh, let's replicate what I have done here. So let's duplicate this one and remove all the nodes. Now, I have made a um, node tree that we're going to have a look at, and I'm going to tell you what I've done. So what I've done here first is the color space transform. We are not going to talk about that too much today, uh, but I do suggest that you use color space transform and edit your footage in the Vinci wide gamut or intermediate with a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 because you will have more colors and contrast to work with. Uh, there are other videos out there uh, that explains that in detail. So I have here the uh, color space transform and this is the delivery uh, which is from white gamut to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 because that's my delivery for YouTube. Now, let's see what I have done here. First of all, uh, we have the exposure. For the moment, I have done nothing. Uh, let's just, because it is fairly evenly exposed, let's just put some saturation into it. That looks all right. Now, to make it less sharp, there are some videos out there that they basically put a blur on the whole image, which I do not like. Now, let me just show you the difference here. It's not connected. So if we go to blur and I'm going to put it a bit stronger so that you can see it even better on YouTube. So this is before and after, you know, it's, it doesn't work because you're blurring out the whole image. But what we want to do is to only soften the contrast in the image so that the sharpness hopefully gets a little bit softer. Now let's remove the blur. Oh yeah, I put the blur on the wrong note. Anyway, let's delete that one. So what we're going to use instead is texture pop that I talked about in the previous video. Let's reset that. You want to go from simple to advanced. You don't want to use RGB, you want to use Luma and Chroma. And here we go. Now let's have a look at the output mode and go to differences. Nothing is happening because I haven't touched these parameters yet. But uh, I do suggest working with the small, fine or tiny to affect this uh, kind of footage. Now let's start off with the small and have a look at this grey part of the image. This part. So can you see that there are some things happening? 
I'm going to put it stronger so you can see it a bit better. You can see here the outlines of what we are going to make a bit softer. In this case, you can see the mountain range here and the rocks. But if we go back now to final result, you can see that the image looks very fake. It almost looks like it's watercolor. So we have gone way too far with the small one. Let's reset that, go back to differences. And I'm going to play around with tiny. And I prefer that if you do use the tiny and you go down in this case to minus 200 more or less, I would also adjust the fine just a little bit so that we get a kind of a curve there. The almost, you can barely see it, but the final result is like so before and after. There's a subtle, softer image, but it's not softening, for example, the sky and uh, things that have not a lot of contrast in them, but they do. But we have now softened, for example, the rocks down here, which is way too sharp. And that gives the iPhone footage away immediately. Same with drone or action camera footage. A quick shout out to Artlist for sponsoring this video. Not only do I get all my music and stock footage from Artlist, but brand new, they finally offer DaVinci Resolve templates. So go to artlist.io, check out their amazing music, stock footage, and the DaVinci Resolve templates. If you use the link below, you're gonna get two additional months for free if you sign up for an annual subscription. So check it out. Now, the next step to make it look a little bit more cinematic is to add motion blur. Let's reset this one. We want it to be the best quality uh, possible. So we're gonna go from uh, better, medium. We're gonna leave that at the moment. But here is what where the magic happens. Now let's zoom into this rock here, for example. You can see that it's blurry on both the um, left side and the right side, but we want it only to be blurry on the right side because that's where I'm coming from. So we're gonna put here blur from previous frame. The granularity, I suggest you put it up to 20 because it gives the blur a more um, organic feel, if you like. Now, let's see how it is looking before and after. You can see that the glacier in the background stays more or less the same, while the rocks in the foreground have a much stronger motion blur to it. And that's exactly what we want because we don't want the whole image to look blurry. And if we play this back, you can see before and after. And now it looks more as if it's shot with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Now, if you want to uh, do it like me, I also have put a lot on it. I have um, developed a lot over the last six months, but I haven't released it uh, until today because I wanted to make sure that it's working with all kinds of cameras. And I have tested it with Alexa, red canon cameras sony panasonic including iphone let's put that one on and you get something like this i just double clicked it and if you find the effect to be a bit too strong we just go down here and we lower it a little bit but i'm also going to go to my face <laughs> happy to be up on the glacier and here we see before and after, before, after. So that's the first example. Now let's have a look at the next example. In this example, we have a panning movement of the iPhone. And this is of course shot with no accessories, no ND filters. So this was shot with a um, built-in camera app. I'm not using the Blackmagic camera app in this example. That is because it's so bright and sunny out there that I can't control the, um, the shutter speed. And if I can't control the shutter speed, I don't get the motion blur that we need, as you can see in this example, because here I can control the light and you can see the motion blur on my hand, for example. Now, but let's have a look at the um, original shots. And you can see when this uh, lovely probably a retired couple walks past uh, they're crystal clear the water is extremely contrasty uh, it looks just weird the castle up here on the side is also looking very sharp uh, contrasty as well and let's just zoom into 100 percent 
and you can see that it looks very digital. If we activate my note tree, you can see that we're going from that to this. And that's also including my LUTs. This is the footage without the LUTs, and this is the footage with my one LUT. And have a look at this, uh, as mentioned, elderly couple here. If we remove the effects, we can see that they are crystal clear. It's like a picture, they're frozen in time. However, putting on the motion blur, so we have over here, we go from this to that, and it just looks much more organic. And if you do this on your iPhone footage, it's gonna be 10 times harder to see if it shots with an iPhone or with a DSLR or mirrorless camera. I also want to show you the last example with an iPhone. It's still my wife's iPhone 13. My note tree is done and have a look here. When he steps down, you can see that there is motion blur in his body, the helmet, while the rest of the image is nice and clear. If we remove the effect, there's no motion blur on his body or helmet. If, if we switch it on, it's nice and blurry, exactly what we want. Now, let's have a look at some uh, drone footage as well. Exactly the same technique has been used. I did not use an MD filter on this specific shot because this was the second time that I used my drone and I was so stressed that I didn't put it on. Let's play it back. Nice motion blur, not overly sharpened and let's have a look at it uh, without any filters. I even see that it is much sharper and it looks more digital. Let's have a look here in the background, for example, of the buildings up here in the, in the hill. This is without and this is with. That's how it should look like. This shot was shot with the ND filter, so we don't need to use the motion blur effect, but you can still play around with the texture pop to soften the image just a little bit so that you remove that kind of digital and over sharpened image coming from drones and action cameras and iPhones. GoPro, uh, this is an image shot years ago. I think it was an uh, GoPro Hero 6. So this is with the no tree I have developed. And let's pause it and look with and without. You can see here that you kind of get sucked into the image. The trees are moving past you with a nice blur, you see? before and after, while the middle of the road stays much clearer. And that's exactly what we are looking for. And without my lot, it looks like that. There you have it. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you want to check my uh, check out my lot, uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description. Uh, I have, as I said, used it with uh, all kinds of cameras. Check it out below. I'm gonna have a sale on it for the next two weeks. So grab it before it goes up in price. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.